Okay. Hello. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hi. How are you? You look you look great. Oh, thanks. I like the straight hair. You're looking very nice. <gasps> Hi, Ashling. I'm Laura. <laughs> How are you, Anna? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Hi, Rob. Oh, you. oh he's in. Look at it, Tash. Hola. Yeah, yeah. It just surprised me. I was like, whoa. I was like, who's this bombshell coming here? I mean, now that you're always not, I mean, you're always bombshell, but I was like, new bombshell. I know. I brushed my hair. I brushed my hair. <laughs> I really have to like kick back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just do the rest of the interview like that. Yeah, that's right. fine. That's right. Yes, with both of you like Let's that. Continue. I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, I'll be all ready. right. Get ready. <laughs> Nailed it. I brushed my beard. No, I noticed actually. You know, it looks very smooth. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Izzy. Hello. I'm comfortable now. I've got my feet all. You're in the bottom of the screen. We look like twins. <laughs> <laughs> I look like your mom. <laughs> I'm working on a real fancy setup here. Do we want blue steel, sunset, or uh, late afternoon? And he's sitting to the side, so he's flexing his guns. Uh, make sure it's silent in the background, did you say? <laughs> yeah, I've got someone in the room with me. She's been a, a nuisance. Is that your mom? Oh, <laughs> oh, bad, eh? I was looking at my beard. My mustache is like very, it's like very Sam Elliott, very full, <laughs> very full. So I trimmed everything else down, but not the mustache. The mustache is thick. Oh, I love it. Uh, I'm hearing some background noise. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. Sorry about that. Well, I took care of that. Ma, I did. Ma. <laughs> Give me the meal, Ma. Try to show the pork. Try to stay a little bit. Direct to me, was it, James? I don't know. <laughs> Pablo. Who are we talking to? Uh, this is Rob that I was telling you about. Oh, I've heard all about you, Rob. Look at the puppies. Why can I not hear Rob? Puppies? Oh, they're all through my earphones. Oh. Um, so we just had three lines, if you could say them. Two of them are very short. One is a little longer, but I'm confident you can both do this amazingly. Ratcheting up the pressure, Eduardo. Hey, guys, it's Eddie to watch the latest episode of what? <laughs> hey, it's Eddie from Below Deck to watch the latest episode of the app Below Deck After Show. Swipe up. Let me do that again. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Eddie to watch the latest episode of the Below Deck After Show, Swipe Up. I can't do it! <laughs> hey everyone, it's Eddie to watch the latest episode of the Watch What Happens Live After Show, Swipe Up. It's a Below Deck After Show. God damn it! <laughs> hey everybody, it's Captain Lee. No, it's it's Eddie from Below Deck. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, it's Captain Lee from Below Deck to watch the latest episode of the Below Deck After Show. Swipe up. Ah, show off. <laughs> One take, Eddie. Eat your heart out. <laughs>
worked her ass off trying to do the right thing all the time. But Chez was, Chez was really a breath of fresh air. She was, and she just, she totally went out of her way to, uh, to make everything work and to try and comply with, with everything I gave her. She spoke her piece, but she understood. And while I allow everybody to have their say, she understands that the buck stops with me. I make the call. Once the call is made, you have to live with it. Eddie, what did you think about, you know, how much uh, Francesca went to Captain Lee this season? I've known Lee for a while now, and I could feel I felt comfortable talking with him about certain things. And, and you know, he's my boss and a friend, you know, and I could, you know, just be like, oh, my God, this and this and this. And then I could be like, and, you know, he wouldn't do anything about it. He's like, OK, see ya, you know, good luck handling that, shit, you, know? <laughs> you know, on your way. And, uh, you know. And then that was it. Like I, you know, I, I would go for him for advice about how to deal with things, but I never would go to him, you know, in hopes that he would handle it for me. You know, he would only do that if if I asked, if I said, Lee, I need help with this. Like I need help with you dealing with, with this. And uh, yeah, Eddie, Eddie would have to come to me and just straightforward say, I pulled out every stop that I could. I've done what I can. I'm at my wits end. I need some help. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. You, you've done what you could. I'll step in and together we'll get it collectively. We'll get it handled. And then the next time the situation rolls up, you'll have a clearer picture on how you want to go about it, depending on the outcome. Depending on the outcome. <laughs> Elizabeth, do you think there was favoritism going on with Francesca? You know, Ashley is a very hard worker and she is great. Um, I'm not saying she doesn't deserve to receive compliments from Francesca. Like, you know, I was happy for her. But the thing about the way that Francesca was complimenting her so much was like, it was pure favoritism. Ash, you're just killing it all the time in laundry with a smile on your face and just getting shit done. Yeah. It's awesome. I'm really happy. Elizabeth, can I just talk to you for a second? Yeah. The service side of things is down. It reflects on me. Last night was an example. You know, I said check on the guests in 10 minutes. Miss That's the reason why I'm staying up. And I feel like I shouldn't I understand. have to. Ash and Francesca just went into the water I had on the radio. Really? Oh, for swim. <laughs> Are you annoyed they went for a swim? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can massage me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm, oh, that feels good. Work harder, work harder. <laughs> it was so deliberate and obvious to me. And yes, it did make me feel bad because I felt like I was being treated the complete opposite. Cold, dismissive, angry at every interaction. There was no favoritism. No. I think the difference is, Ash, you've only had 12 months experience working on yachts, but you've been trained on a proper super yacht, mm. you know? And then you've got Elizabeth, who's got four years, four years um, yachting experience. What does she not know how to put cutlery? There are two sets of cutlery on the boat, and she put them in the crew mess dishwasher and like in the wrong slots like that stuff comes so naturally yeah. and when you've been trained for four years like you should know that stuff you know like it's not something you know that ash after yeah. 12 months you'd know that after six of doing one season of course. so you know that after six months when i started to see those cracks i then i started to question her experience in the galley pantry it's not completely clean. Beach setup stuff, it's still a mess. I really need you to step up the game. She has great energy, but you know, work-wise and work ethic, it wasn't really there. And it's not what I needed and it's not what the other crew needed either. I don't think it was being favoritism or anything like that. I think it's because we worked well together. We had a fantastic we have a fantastic yeah. work ethic. You know what I mean? Like I don't think there was any sort of favoritism. So like she was slacking we were working freaking hard like like it wasn't fair yeah so i don't think it was any no sort it of wasn't fair, fair. Yeah. yeah elizabeth what do you think bonded uh francesca and ashling number one do you feel that i guess it's like an australian thing which is fine you know like she worked on one of the bigger boats for like i think a year and i just think that her experience made francesca feel just more confident in her than with me. Even though I have a lot of experience and I have worked on bigger boats, 
she just wasn't as yeah confident in mine as she was with Ashley. It really felt like I was like back in high school and you know, it was like, it did, did it got it. clicky. It got clicky. It, it was did. like these two girls. And it was like, and it, it, for me, like it felt, yeah. And it started feeling like deliberate, like just like the way they'd like joke around and like Francesca just treated me the complete opposite. Like there was like no even trying to include me in that. It was like literally just like, Ash is now my best friend and I hate you. <laughs> like I, that's how I felt. Like it literally was just, that's, that's, that, that was the whole trans transition there. Yeah. She's just an impossible to please boss, which started making me question if it was really my work ability or if it was personal. So James, we see you call your mom a few times this season. Hello, what's going on, mommy dearest? You all right? Yeah, it has to be, it has to be a quick one. Hello. Hello, you all right? Oh, how are you? Oh, good, as always, as always, good. Yeah, I'm all right now. It's just one of them days. I need my mum to support me, because I'm very delicate. I live at home with my mum. She's in the next room, but I call her every day. I'm just, I'm just used to calling her, even if it's just to say what you're up to or what's this. I'm just used to calling her. James, can you bring your mum on for a little bit? Do you want to see her? Let's see if she's decent. Right. One second. This suspense is killing me. It goes like that. that Where? That bit there goes over your ear. So look, watch my ear. <laughs> Just goes over like that. You think that's quite straightforward? Straightforward. Yeah. Couldn't be more straightforward. I, I stick it in, Mum. I've got it. There you go. <laughs> she's in. <laughs> <laughs> so don't mind the accent. I know it's a bit broad. Coming from you. You have to get woken up by the captain's horn. What? The captain's horn waking you up. Wake me up at the captain's door. Horn. What's he? It's the accent, I know. Yeah, I can't understand you just yet. I was just telling James, I can see where he gets all his good looks from now. <laughs> oh, thank you. Not looking my best either, but thank you. What's me either? I don't know. What's wrong with me? Yeah, you're okay. If your son wasn't there, it it would have been a lot worse. But he said the same about you. I actually did say the same thing. Oh. He said, up until you come in, it was just like everyone was really boring. And then he said, you came along. Ah, oh. Mum, you can just run the interview now. Yeah, so you just, can just, just start see. asking us questions. <laughs> I know, it'd be a lot better than James, I, I, to be I honest. actually want you to leave it with you. Yeah, he'd like that. Anyway, it's been very nice talking to you both. We've replaced my mum. We've got little Pablo. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you have three French Bulldogs, right? Three Frenchies, yeah. This one is Pablo, and then we have one called Ralph and one called Reggie. And he doesn't want to be with me, so that's how that works. Where were we? <laughs> So this season, it seems like Elizabeth is pretty into like crystals and energy healing. Today's the day of completion. I give thanks for this perfect day. Is there any way you can give a little like healing virtually? Oh my God. What were her rituals on Charter? Her rituals on Charter. <laughs> Bringing 30 odd plus crystals on board. <laughs> Elizabeth has a crystal. Oh, I've, yeah. I, this one's amazing. This one's beautiful, though, if you guys see it. That one is really insane. pretty. Yeah, Arkansas. <gasps> I have a quartz from Arkansas as well. She used to literally stuff crystals down her bra. I got a smoky quartz crystal to oh, do sublimate any negative energy that might come our way. Good. <laughs> Depending on how she feels for the day, whether she needs positivity or strength or... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, some people are really into it. I've got a lot of friends that are into very spiritual yeah. and um, a lot of well-being industries. I think it's quite big here in Australia as well. But Elizabeth um, is like, I think, next level sort of like obsessed. This one I literally mined myself in Arkansas. Look how big it is. Yeah, the quartz. It's amazing. Yeah, it, the largest quartz crystal deposit is in Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. If you need to meditate every morning, which is, I think, such an amazing thing if someone can do that. And then, of course, you know, if you do have, you know, a little pendant that, you know, 
has some sort of a crystal in there that's a meaning to you if you think that's going to get you through I your day. I have one. Look. Yeah, no, matching. <laughs> I have a crystal as well. But I also have an amethyst and a, uh, a rose quartz here. <laughs> I have mine over in the windows. Yeah. Oh, I love Good. that. I'm, I'm looking at yeah. the others in the window too. I think that it's really important to be spiritual. I have a lot of surround myself with a lot of spirituality in my life as well. But I think that when you start projecting it onto other people and, and making a part of um, like forcing it on them, that's something different. Because I think it should be a spiritual practice is your own practice. And, you know, I think that's a very personal thing. I think it was a little bit more exaggerated and, and not very authentic. <laughs> I'm happy for her. I mean, I love yeah. it. You know, go her. She, you know, if she wants to put crystals, you know, I have a crystal on my necklace. You know, if she wants to put crystals in her bra and wherever, and then it. yeah, mm -hmm. in her pockets. Then go for it. I think that's a really cool thing if that's what gets you through mm -hmm. the day. It's called if you do you, just do you. Like, <laughs> yeah, do what you're gonna do. Francesca, we we see you do some. Um, it looks like some breathing exercises. Um, you know, throughout the season. Jane, Elizabeth, uh, Rachel is definitely a spiritual person. Mm -hmm. Ash, you're very spiritual. Um, I think we're all had that in common. And my morning routine is breathing exercises. So I kind of change it up sometimes just depending on how I'm feeling, how my energy is. Sometimes I do Nadi Sadhana, which is allowing breath to pass through the nostrils that way or sometimes I do Kabbalah Bhati which is breathing through your diaphragm. The reason why I do it in the morning is because it um, creates balance and alignment. I just find for me it just helps me through the day. You know I go in the day with a clear mind so I think most mornings I get up and I meditate and I make sure that I find the time to. If I need to get up 15 minutes earlier than my shift then I'll do that but I, I don't feel like if I'm in a stressful situation that I think I'm thinking like oh my god I need to go and breathe <laughs> I don't think like that I'm not relying on it I just know that it's a nice calming thing to do Rachel I had heard you had worked with Kate Chastain yeah, we had some really interesting times together <laughs> did you watch Kate at all on the show yeah, I'm proud of her. She did a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm.